Zariul's asset was none other than Mazora herself. Of course. Tricks on top of tricks on top of tricks. But I've only got six months before I made a free man. Thanks be to the Triad. No, scratch that. Thanks be to you. Six months is a long time. Time enough to weasel her way out of her promise. I can't imagine how. The pact binds her as tightly as it binds me. All I have to do is stay alive. That should be easy enough, with someone of your skill at my side. General Thorm was attacked. The order to evacuate given. You should not be here. I conclude you are one of the attackers. This is a misunderstanding. I was sent to support you with the eradication of these traitors. I have no need for a throne. You would merely get in the way. Go on, make yourself useful somewhere. If you cannot manage that, just stay out of the way. As the console bursts into life, a mind touches your own. Alien and full of desperate need, but fragmented too. It is incomplete. It yearns to connect, but needs you to guide the process, linking each part of your mind to its like. That should do it. Time to see what's back there. to phlegm all over Lord Gortas during my first performance, would it? Mm, acoustics are a little off in here. Which is... where, exactly? Are you some kind of performer? Oh, just a serving girl with notions. Till I met Lord Gortash. He heard me singing in Beggar's Rest. Said he needed someone to give voice to lost knowledge. A little over my head, being honest. But the Lord has gold. I trust he knows his business. Now... My best warm up. No need. I think you got the part. Truly? <gasps> and my ma said the singing would come to naught. Thank you, thank you. The owl bear ball, owl will's icy eye. Every day he comes, every day for three days, to ask me how I feel. I want to tell, but I am confused. Which... which day is it? Who is this here talking about? We are his pets. His plan, Lord Gortash. The first day? The first, yes. Five days since he put that thing in my eye, but the first day he came to visit. He says I am the last, that the other subjects have all changed. It's the second day. I hurts. Head hurts. But he says I am past the worst of it, that I won't change like the others. He's given me a place of honor, so he can repeat his miracle and a name. True soul. It's the third day. She whispers in my mind. 
She sings. Praise the Absolute. Tell me about these others. Separate cells. I never saw them. But when they changed... My head! I can feel them in my head! Hmm. Fine bones, sharp jaw. Some variety of elf? Pretty enough for a flesh prison. If not the noble Githzerai features I was born with. The monk-like Githzerai, sibling race to the warrior Githyanki. Their contempt for one another is eclipsed only by their shared hatred of the Elithids. I'd guess you're no willing guest of the Gake either. Perhaps we might aid one another. I'm listening. What aid are you offering? My order taught a psionic technique much feared by the Gake. They destroyed us for it, and kept me as a trophy. I never broke, but I've spent all these centuries awake, aware. So here is my offer. Use your tadpole, erase me, and I will pass my technique on to you. You want me to kill you. What if I can free you instead? My people dwell in limbo. A realm of pure chaotic thought. With my mind gone, perhaps my soul will return there. Or perhaps not. Death, freedom, they are one and the same. Touch my mind and purge it. At the very moment you do, I will make my knowledge yours. I will use the tadpole to reach out and erase her mind. The awareness that floods you is nothing like the tadpole. It is tentative and tinged with the loneliness of eons. It fades beneath your touch, but you feel something left behind, a fragment. It is only knowledge yet, without comprehension. But when you use it, you will see. And I... Smart. Right. Use our brains. Right. You get it. I've been watching. Learning. This place is alive. A big thinking thing. And it needs our flesh to grow. I've seen them put corpses in the walls and they just melt away. So we've got to trick it, see? Make it think we're part of it. That's why the door's only open for... Wait. How did you get in here? Away, slave! They might have taken your mind, but they won't have mine! This is my eye patch. What's become of her? No longer a background murmur, the presence in your mind builds to a roar. We've found it. The Absolute is behind this door. You said it was under control. 
It isn't you I answer to, Gortash. Motherfucker. Gortash. Oh, the general voice. Is this where we salute? Salute, yes. With cleavers through his blood-starved flesh. How it crawls with failure. Like flies on lick-wet carrion. You forget yourself, Orin. I have played my part. You built an army for our masters, true enough. But what of the astral prison? A rogue true soul flaunting it under your nose all this time. And you ran from her. Sure that they would follow and deliver it into my hands here. If you would cease these distractions. The distractions have been yours, Ketherick. Perhaps we never should have dug your daughter up. <sighs> so you haven't lost your edge. But you're still not as sharp as Orin, I wager. The Slayer against the Undying One. That'd be fun to see. His crypt breath sings to my sinews again, 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 again. He must lead the murder march to Border's grave. If the weapon is truly in your grasp, Ketherick, might I suggest closing your fist? Orin and I can wait for you no longer. The plan proceeds. We're going to the city and we expect you to follow. Army and the weapon in tow. The Edict of Bane. The last! Creatures in existence, enslaved by mere mortals. There we are. It wouldn't do to fight in front of our guest. Behold, Duke Ravengard, the Absolute. Who will preserve us? You wag your word flap in vain, Odeling. Once the worm holds the whip, your shredded flesh will serve us. really time we were going. We will empty this place and begin the march. You may catch up with the army once you've retrieved the weapon. And Ketherick, do try not to sulk. You're supposed to be the fearsome general come to conquer the city. And I am the hero who will save it. What is it, I wonder, that draws one toward death like a moth to light? You could have run away, absconded with the prism. The one thing that could prevent me from fulfilling my destiny. But the lure of one's destiny is irresistible, isn't it? Perhaps you hope to learn your place in history before you are erased from it. A bright flash of clarity before the snuffing out. Why is the prism so important to you? The very fact of your being attests to its power. 
Despite your infection, you resisted the brain here in the heart of its domain. What good is an army of thralls if they do not obey their master? Let us speak plainly. My Lord Merkel gave me the one thing I desired, the one thing no other god could grant me. My daughter's life returned, her heart beating once more. For that, he asked that I serve as his chosen. Join Orin and Gortash to grow the cult of the Absolute, and then take control of it. He's never had a more devoted follower. I have fought great wars before, in the service of other gods and other powers. But for Merkel, I would condemn all of Faerun to death. You are all that stands between me and my destiny. And you have brought the prism here. I will kill you now. And then I will raise you as my servant. I was ready to show you mercy before. It's still not too late. You can repent. Repent? Would that even be possible? Perhaps. No. There is no repentance. No release. My debt can never be repaid. Watching. He is listening. He is. He is. You dare end one who belongs to me. I am the smile of the world cleansed. I
picture comes together. The Absolute is neither God nor man. It is the Elder Brain you saw, held here by those three against its will. The crown it wears controls it, and these stones control the crown. It has been dominated. To master an Elder Brain, to subdue it, our enemies are formidable. How is it you're able to leave the Astral Prism now? A temporary reprieve, but a welcome one. With a brain on its way to the city, its influence here is weakened. What are these stones? The crown's markings suggest it was forged in Netheril, an ancient empire whose mastery over magic rivaled that of the gods. It is a crown of domination. The stones were taken from its crest. They are nether stones, imbued with the ability to control the wearer of the crown. The Crown's Netherese magic must be the true source of the Parasite's abilities. This must be what elevates their potential. And it must be the reason nobody could heal you. If the Crown can do this to the Parasite, I dare not imagine what it is doing to the Brain. Do you know who our enemies are? One of them I know, Lord Enver Gortash. An arms dealer and a slaver. A worshipper of Bane, the god of tyranny. The other is a mystery to me. But the way she spoke, it is most likely she follows Baal, god of murder. Ketherick was a follower of Merkel, which means the Absolute is a front for the gods of death, and our enemies are the Chosen of the Dead Three. Chosen of the Dead Three? Bane, Baal, and Merkel. 
the tyrant, the assassin, and the necromancer. They are known to pick from their most devout followers, a chosen, granting them incredible powers. Each one alone would be a formidable enemy. But working together and controlling an elder brain, I dare not imagine what they might achieve. What do we do now? We prepare for the fight of our lives, and the lives of everyone in Faerun. The army of the Absolute is marching on Baldur's Gate. Within the city, an elder brain, brimming with power, ready to turn everyone within its reach into mind flayers. All it needs is an order. An order the Death God's Chosen are on the cusp of giving. We must wrest control of the brain from the Chosen before that happens. We must take their stones. Our chances of success are slim, but we must not fail. If we fail, everything ends. I will be your shield, but you must be the sword. And when the chance comes to strike, you must take it, for there may only be one chance. The door pulses in recognition. The presence is weak now, a hollow vessel without a heart. It doesn't resist. Gods be damned. With that parasite in his brain, Father could wreak untold havoc in the Absolute's name. Should Baldur's Gate fall to the Absolute, every one of the coast cities will be ripe for the plucking. We're not just fighting for our cure. We're fighting for my father. We're fighting for the Gate. We're fighting for all of Faerun. The Absolute's cult has Ravenguard. Where will they take him? Worm's Rock Fortress. All travelers to Baldur's Gate flow through it. It serves as headquarters for the Flaming Fist and their commander, my father. The Absolute's armies on the march. Gods forbid a tadpole Grand Duke throw open the gates for them. What do you know about Gortash and Orin? Orin? I'd never heard tell of. But Gortash I know. Or know of, more precisely. A self-styled strategic advisor to Baldur's Gate's peers. A bit player with dreams of a leading role, the way Father told it. He had no use for Gortash, and even less for his advice. I don't remember much beyond that. But where these Chosen are concerned, I have a suspicion we're about to know more than we'd like. Why, yes! Once Althea is done with this song, we will be looking for patrons. All coppers welcome, pal. I found Mole's eye patch. So? It, it's just Mole's eye patch. She's lost loads of them. That doesn't mean anything. Did you want something, or are you just here to stir? I just thought Mole would be here with the rest of you. No. But she'll turn up at some point. That's just how Mole is. You're here. Good. That's good. Are you all right? Me? Oh, I'm fine. I'm just worried about the kids. Maul is still missing, and they haven't taken it too well. I've been trying to cheer them up. We're writing a song together. But I think they're just humoring me. I'm sure they appreciate it. <laughs> Maybe. I'd love to put on a show just for them. But it's boring if I'm the only one playing. I need another bard. Maybe I'll find one in the city. Until then, the kids and I shall work on our masterpiece. I wish we could stay and see what this place will be like without the shadows. I bet it's beautiful. No rest for the wicked, huh? The shadows are losing their grip on these lands. Shah can indeed be thwarted. Comforting to know. Thanks for watching out. I could have tossed me back in the shadows. My mum lives in the lower city. If those freaks hurt her, I'll turn them inside out. When Duke Elton formed the Flaming Fist, he saw out people of... 
courage and honor to fill its ranks. You saved Daniel, lifted the curse, and killed an immortal. It's safe to say you'd have been recruited in an instant. Thank you. It would have been an honor to serve under Duke Elton. Of course, I have no idea what life is like under Duke Ravengard's rule, but I've seen the respect he inspires in the Flaming Fist. And that tells me all I need about him as a leader. I hope you can save Duke Ravengard for the good of Baldur's Gate. Come with me. I could use a Flaming Fist by my side. <laughs> Thank you. But look at me. I am a relic, a glimpse of history barely strong enough to stand on his own two feet. Besides, Nathaniel should have someone here when he wakes up. It's the least I can do. And after Thaniel awakens? I don't think there will be an after. The truth is, the shadow fell. Broke something inside me, something no healer can fix. I don't know how long I have, but because of you, Thaniel is safe. Because of you, I could help him as he helped me. So, thank you, my friend. And know that I have no regrets. Thaniel rests well. He's healing very rapidly, now that Oliver has returned to him. So when will the curse actually be lifted? I can't say for certain, but we'll see it come to pass long before this place recedes behind us. Don't worry. All is at hand. We can depart whenever you're ready. What happened to Oliver exactly? Did Thaniel absorb him? No more than my right hand can absorb my left. Oliver is helping Thaniel to recover. They both lie dormant, like trees awaiting spring. Once the curse is lifted, they can stand as one or as a pair. Whatever they win, I hope they will remain as a pair. It will be good for them both to have a friend once I'm gone. Still, I would like to return here someday. See Thaniel and Oliver again. In my meditations, or perhaps in person, if the Oak Father wills it. I hope he does. I'm glad I could help. I knew I could put my faith in you. If only we had met sooner. What now? You've got what you wanted, after all. I have. But perhaps there is more that I want. Anyway, once the curse is lifted, nature can take its course without me. I belong at your side. I'm glad to have you. And I'm glad to be had. Glad to be with you, I mean. You did it. Catherick Thorm is no more. The Shadow's grip is broken. Soon, the land shall heal. I'm glad I could help. Not as glad as I am. Nature moves at its own pace and bestows its bounty when it sees fit. Give it time. A reward shall come to you when you need it most. I can't believe it. I can't believe Aelin is here. And my father. I heard what happened. What he become by killing him. You set him free. You set Aelin free. And me. You and Eileen seem to have a lot of history. What happened? A great deal. But still, some of the details elude me. Catherick Thorm is... was... my father. He raised me to serve Saluna as my mother, rest her soul, had wished. He was everything to me, all my life. When an emissary of Saruna came to our little town, we were elated. Dame Aelin, daughter of the Moon Maiden herself. Tell me, do you believe in love at first sight? Certainly. There's magic in a look. That's exactly it. And I tell you, I took one look at her and I just 
knew she was it. Lucky for me, she felt the same way. But my father was skeptical. Aelin is immortal, after all. I understand it's strange. There's an imbalance between us, certainly. But I suppose loving Aelin felt the same as loving myself. It was natural. Then... And this is where I still need answers. I died. I'm not sure how or why, but all was black, black, black. Next I knew I was being jolted awake. I smelled musty air, I saw shadows. And then my father's face, so changed, so hideously warped. He'd become the Chosen of Merkel. I didn't know that then, but I could see the change in him. He told me we'd be together now, said that Aelin was dead. I couldn't speak, could only run. I found last light within the shadows, made a shelter there, prayed my father wouldn't find me. By the time Jahira came, I'd pieced together just enough to know I'd been dead a hundred years. That my father was the source of the horrors plaguing this land, my home. I couldn't tell her who I was. I had to protect them, and myself, no matter what. Understandable. It's all out in the open now, and with my father dead, I have nothing to fear. Except for Aelin. She needs healing, rest. I'm grateful for your help, your friendship. I hope we won't intrude on your hospitality too long, but I'm grateful for a safe place to, well, just to be. A curse lifted, the dead three allied once more. The balance shifts. There are depths to this alliance yet unplumbed. Consider, mortal. Do illithids possess souls? I'm not sure. Don't all living things? No. Nor canst thou count mind flares among them. Yet, the three amass an illithid army void of apostolic souls that could imbue them. A flock without souls, yet to what end, mortal? This is the question thou must come to answer. Until such time, be availed of my services. You seem to know a lot about the Dead Three. Yes, Bane, Lord of Darkness, Baal, Lord of Murder, Merkel, Lord of Bone. Once judged, ascended, then vanquished as one and as three. The alliance is reforged, mortal. The plains thus quake, and the gods shudder. Speak plainly. Isn't there more you can tell me? No. I'm surprised to see you here. Where matters of balance are concerned, I am eternally cold. There you are. I have awaited your arrival with great anticipation. Come closer. Feel my voice rattle your bones as I proclaim our victory. Moon Maiden Saluna, hear me! Ketherick Thorm, traitor, apostle of Merkel, is dead at last! My mate, Most High, darling Isabel, is safe and well. Safe and well, and return to my embrace! Blessings upon the Slayer of the Wicked One. I couldn't have done it without you. We are a powerful party indeed. Faerun itself trembles at our touch. My darling Isabel says we will stay allied at your side. 
I am pleased to hear it. There's still a great deal about you I don't know. Pray, ask, and I will tell. Are you really Selin's daughter? Do I not radiate with my mother's brightness, her glory? There can be no doubt. I am of her silvered flesh, her celestial womb. Would your mother be willing to aid us in the fight against the Dead Three? Why, she already has. She has brought her sword to your side, Dame Aelin. So mighty are her wonders, her great wisdom. Together, we will set this fair land free of tyranny and murder. How did you come to be trapped in the Shadowfell? <sighs> Ketherick Thorn. Father of my one and only love, enslaver of Dame Aelin. <sighs> Ketherick Thorn never did trust me, even when he worshipped the Moon Maiden. He was threatened by my love for Isabel, by her love for me. When she died, curse the day, the hour. We each of us mourned bitterly, but Ketherick's pain could be touched by no aid, no boundary. He turned to wretched Shah, the Lady of Loss, for relief, and she whispered into his ear, poisoning his mind. He and his loathsome advisor, Balthazar, lured me into the Shadowfell, claimed they'd found someone in need of my aid. There, they trapped me in their infernal cage. I was killed, murdered, made dead over and over and over by justicias of every make and kind. I was reborn, for it is my nature, and Ketherick fed upon my immortality all the while. But lo, the brute is dead, and we, we live! You wanted something? I'm here for you, if you need me. Thank you. I think any attempts at comforting me might be in vain just now. You're sweet to keep me in your thoughts. There's some matters I wanted to discuss. I'm sorry. It might be best kept until later. I'd be a poor counsel and worse company just now. The shadows are lifted. Finally, we can breathe free. Mizora said you can say what led to your pact and exile. It's time I know the whole truth. Yes. But first, a question. If your home were under siege, what would you sacrifice to save it? I'd give my life if it meant keeping the residents safe. As would I. And more. I was 17. Father, older Raven Guard, had just been named a Grand Duke and was called away to Elterel to help settle a dispute. That's when the Cult of the Dragon made its move. What's the Cult of the Dragon? I never heard of them. A religion devoted to conjuring the most evil of goddesses, the Dragon Tiamat. A ten day after Father left, I heard a whisper as I slept. Dusk Hawk Hill, the Queen of Chaos awakens. Go alone. I grabbed a rapier and set out. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, yet not a single star was shining. There they were, gathered at the foot of the hill. Your head tingles. Will wants to show you what happened. In the looming shadow of the mount, five groups of five figures each encircle a lofty totem. Atop each totem, a dragon's head is carved, and a massive orb held in its mouth. The cultists chant, first softly, then crying to the starless sky. There is a crack of thunder, a gust of wind, and a dragon's white head appears in the storm. As the maelstrom howls, Mizora's lips press to your ear. She will destroy Baldur's Gate. Grant me your soul and I will give you the power to save it, she whispers. She read the terms while two devils stood witness. And I said yes. One soul for one city. Surely Mizora doesn't care about Baldur's Gate. Why would she want to save it? 
She didn't. She came on order of her mistress, Zariel. Tiamat made a play for power. Zariel had other plans. That was the most Mazora's ever said. All that mattered was that she got her prize. Another pet added to her warlock menagerie. Sacrificing your soul to save the city was a brave thing to do. I don't know that it was brave. I just know that it was right. The moment I agreed, I burned with the fires of Avernus and oozed the rot of Dis. The cultists choked on our poisons and burned from our flames. And when we were done, all that remained were five grayed orbs atop a pile of ash. My soul was bound, and my lips were sealed. Is that how you lost your eye in the battle with the Cult of the Dragon? It is. The one scar I ever bore of it. You were right, of course. The new eye is a sending stone, courtesy of Mazora. She uses it to track my location and call from a distance. I could flee to the spine of the world, or the depths of the lower dark, and still never shake her. And what about your father, the Grand Duke? He returned to an unsuspecting city and a wayward son with a smirking devil at his side. I tried to tell him the truth, but my mouth couldn't form the words. I'd led him to the battlefield, but Mazora had swept it clean. I showed him my stone eye, but he only turned away. After, he said only one word. Go. So I did. You must have been furious at your father for throwing you out of the city. No, never. He did the only thing he could. In his eyes, I invited a devil into our midst. I was a fool at best, a traitor at worst. And Grand Duke Ravenguard suffers neither. Do you miss your father? More than you know. The better question is, did he ever miss me? If he did, he missed the Will Ravenguard he once knew, not the hell-touched warlock he returned to. I would not linger in this land over long, but whatever your business, I will aid you if I can. I think we've done rather a good thing here. A welcome change to give this land a sliver of hope amongst so much despair. The curse is broken and the shadows are lifting. In time, these lands will heal. I never saw myself as a banisher of shadows before. <laughs> I was always more of a lurker in, historically. I guess I can take care of myself. I mean, I've gotten this far. You saw Gortash, didn't you? What the fuck was he doing down there? Is all of this because of him? The tadpole, the absolute. How? I don't know how this plot fits together yet, but we will stop him. I was his bodyguard. I looked after him with my life. I trusted him more than anything. He gave me away to Zariel just for kicks. He ruined my life just when it was starting. And now he'll use up the entire Sword Coast. He has to die. And I'm gonna be the one who kills him. We'll do it together. Whatever it takes. He can't get away with what he's done. To me. To us. He won't get away with it. I can feel it. The engine. It's getting hotter, louder. It's going to blow if we don't find another way to fix it. You know, Zariel may have put the fucking thing in, but Gortash gave her the go-ahead. You expect this shit from devils, but not from the people you care about. Let's get to the city. Got business there I'm highly fucking keen to attend to. What do you know about me? 
you spoke of my past. Being chased by wolves. I told no one about that. Almost no one. But I certainly didn't share that with you. There is nothing I can tell you that you do not already know yourself. They trained you well, trained you hard. Chiseled away any part of you that did not fit their plan. They made you forget. I chose to do that. For the mission to protect Shaz... Secrets. Yes, yes, that is an old song, girl. Your goddess cares more for her precious secrets than she... Get to the point. When you freed me, you severed a bond between me and that dog, Thorm. A bond of pain. His, inflicted on me. When I laid eyes on you, I sensed a similar bond. You, tethered to two others. Someplace distant. Let me help you remember. You feel Shadowheart's mind tug at the edges of your own. You know this sensation. She wants you to see whatever is about to be revealed. Your mind joins with Shadow Hearts. Something pulls at you both, bringing you elsewhere. in him. Do you not recognize your own blood? My father. That was him. That is him. He lives still. And your mother, too. No. It can't be. I'm an orphan. And who told you that? Your adoptive family? You are not to blame. You were young, impressionable. They took you because they wanted to break and remake you. But you are a child no longer. You are a woman. One who knows what must be done. My parents... I need to save them. I'll help. Your parents are with your abductors. You will need to return to their lair. But be warned. You may have once thought of them as comrades, mentors, friends, even lovers. They will all be enemies now. You have been forewarned for what is to come, but not yet forearmed. The spear. How do you have it? I threw it into the Shadowfell. Shar is quick to discard whatever she has no use for. I think you know that well enough, but I felt it call to me as I took flight. Whatever Shah calls her own, Saluna has equal claim to. They are one and the same. Their power is matched and mirrored. Take it. You will find it useful. What you do with it, that will be up to you. Same as before. I'll need every advantage, it seems. Thank you. A debt repaid. You returned my life unto me. Now go and claim your own. <laughs> it hurts. Shah torments you still. What a spiteful creature she is. This will not stop until you take action. See that your parents' sacrifices are not in vain. Allow the Moon Maiden to guide you at last. You are keen to join me, don't you want to serve the Absolute? What Absolute? The 
the Absolute does not care about us. And we do not care about the Absolute. We are different. And we are saved. Friend! Why, hello, lover. <laughs> that sounded more debonair in my head, I'll admit. Do you need something? How are you feeling? Relieved. Terrified. Sick to my stomach. I can't keep my feelings straight ever since I spared Night Song. Defied Sha. I don't know what comes next. But at least I have you by my side. May I have a kiss? Just the one? been lied to my whole life and I was gullible enough to just believe it my parents are alive and I have to save them I think a part of me always knew that a part that Shah denied to me whatever you must do I will be by your side thank you but I want you to refrain from foolish heroics when the time comes, we'll be entering a nest of vipers. I couldn't bear to lose you. Not after everything. We'd better press on for now, and hope we're ready when the moment comes. But before that, there's one thing I need to see to. And what's that? You'll see for yourself soon enough. Just leave it with me. Looking forward to a bit of rest, if I'm honest. It's been a long century. My resplendence honors yours. You should join my camp permanently. We can fight the powers of evil together. Our thoughts are as one, my friend. You must face the Chosen of Bane and Baal. I will do my part to see them laid low. We leave the heart of the Absolute alive, thanks to you. You did well to defeat Ketherick, but Ketherick was only the first to fall. There are many more battles ahead, and they will not be so easily won. You will need allies. I know. That's why I recruited Jahira. Jahira's wisdom will be an asset to you on the journey ahead. Her harpers, too. Halsin's strength and loyalty will bolster you in times of need. But if we are to succeed, we will need others. I will build an army to rival that of the Absolute. Baldur's Gate may not know it yet, but its fate is bound to ours. Seek on its streets those whose purpose aligns with our own, and invite them to our cause. Together, we will put an end to the Absolute, the Chosen, all. The curse has been lifted, the lands cleansed of the shadows. Catherick's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this at least, you have triumphed. <laughs>